So let's take a look at the following three molecules and by using the Frost Circle method determine which ones are aromatic and which ones are not. So let's begin with molecule A. So basically the way that we use the Frost Circle technique is we take our molecule, we place it inside a circle so that all the point edges touch the circumference of our circle and we make sure to orient the vertex of our polygon, in this case, this particular molecule, exactly downward. So the bottom point will end up being here and these two points will basically end up touching as shown. So basically, let's take our ruler and let's connect our line. So we have our base of the triangle, so let's place it here. The base of our triangle, which will be here, the vertex will be at the bottom. So we connect our other two sides and we get the following diagram. So here are the points of intersection and each one of these points will basically designate a certain molecular or orbital, a certain pi molecular orbital. So we have one pi molecular orbital that will be on the bottom and two will be on this level here. Now we also draw our dashed line that basically cuts the circle exactly in half. In half. And this line is known as the non-bonding orbital line. So if any one of our energy orbitals appears on this line, that designates a non-bonding orbital. So basically everything below represents our bonding pi molecular orbital. Everything above represents the anti-bond molecular orbital. So we have one bonding and two anti-bonding molecular orbitals. And finally, we count the number of electrons pi electrons so we have one two three four and we place them accordingly into the following orbital so we have two electrons a maximum of two electrons by the Pauli exclusion principle can fit into this orbital here so we have one two and then we have two left over so by Hund's rule, one goes inside here and the second one goes inside here. Now, the question is, is this an aromatic compound? And the answer is no. The reasoning is, if the electrons are found above in the anti-bonding or the non-bonding pi molecular orbitals, that creates a very unstable system. And these types of molecules are not... aromatic. Now let's move on to molecule number two. So the molecule is shown in diagram B. So basically we have this polygon, a five-sided polygon. So this is our cyclopentene, uh, pentene, cyclo uh, dipentene. So we have two bonds. Each one of these bonds represents two electrons that fit into the pi system. And we also have these two electrons on the end. So we have a total of six pi electrons. So let's begin by approximating where our five intersections will be. So let's suppose this is our base. So basically this is our vertex here. And let's say that these are our two lines here. So we have, we connect these. And then we connect these. So remember the vertex always is found on the bottom of the circle, the vertex of our molecule. Okay, so we have this is one, this is a second intersection, a third intersection, fourth intersection, and fifth intersection. And so each one of these intersections basically designates our pi molecular orbital. So we have one found here, one found here, 
we have another one found here, a fourth one found here, and a fifth one found here. So now we can basically draw our non-bonding line, which basically cuts the circle in half. And that is, so this line must go directly through the center origin of the circle because it cuts it in half. So everything above are the higher in energy anti-bonding, everything below are the lower in energy bonding. So now let's look at how many electrons in the pi system we have. So we said one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have two electrons go into here, one electron goes here, into here, the, the, uh, the, the fifth one goes there, the sixth one goes here. So we basically have all our electrons fit inside the lower in energy bonding pi molecular orbitals and none of them are found in higher in energy anti-bonding or non-bonding and so that basically means this will be a stabilized molecule, it will be lower in energy and it will be aromatic. So basically by using the frost circle technique we see that is that this molecule is in fact <clears throat> aromatic. And finally, let's move on to molecule C. So in this case, we have essentially a square. So we have a polygon that is a square. It has four sides and it has four corners where each one of these corners designate our carbon atom. So we have the vertex and really we could choose any one of these vertex to be on bottom. So one is here, one is here, one is here, and one is here. So let's connect. There's one side, one sigma bond, the second sigma bond, the third sigma bond, and the last, the fourth sigma bond. So now let's draw our, um, the line that bisects the circle and this time it happens to go through these two intersecting points. So by intersecting points, we basically mean the points of intersection between the circle and our edges or the point on our uh, polygon, our molecule. So let's now take account of how many intersections we have. One, two, three, four. So we have a four pi molecular orbitals. So one of these is on the bottom, the other two basically appear here, and the final one appears here. So basically in this case we have one anti-bonding, one bonding, and two non-bonding. So now let's take account of the number of electrons. So we have a positive charge here, a positive charge here. So we have two open 2p orbitals. So we have a fully conjugated system because these two electrons will be able to basically move about this square molecule. Now, what's the count of the number of pi electrons? Well, it's simply one, two, two in this single pi. So we have one and two. So we basically have our two electrons go entirely into the lower in energy stabilizing pi bonding molecular orbitals and none of them go into the higher in energy non-bonding or anti-bonding. So by our frost circle technique we see that this is in fact an arrow. Wow, horrible spelling aromatic. So molecule B and C are both aromatic and molecule A is not because we see that for this case two electrons go into the higher in energy orbitals, anti-bonding orbitals, and that destabilizes that system versus in case B and C, all these electrons fit very snugly into the lower in energy bonding, pi bonding molecular orbitals.